So looking right. back, which technology would you have liked to invent it? Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's very good. Uh, I, I wasn't quite good enough for patch clamping or fluorescent indicators. I'll tell you what appeals to me is the technologies which turn out to be really simple. Yeah, polymerase chain reaction, monoclonal antibodies. These were just crazy ideas that happened to work. I would, if, if I were well known for something, I'd much rather be well known for succeeding on a crazy idea than from uh, some great intellectual achievement. Who's your favorite scientist? Oh, oh, Richard Feynman, probably. But I, I've also had a strong admiration for Roger Chen, sadly no longer with us either. Stephen Hawking was cool too. But there's something about Feynman, he was such a good communicator and being able to explain things in a much more straightforward way than many other people could. If you could choose to have a superpower, what would that be? To be able to instantly travel anywhere and see all the wonderful things in the universe. Yeah, to be able to somehow survive and yeah, looking at black hole, oh, I must even look at them, or, or seeing all these things. I'm an arm, armchair astronomer and all the mm. crazy stuff that's out there. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to at least somehow visit or experience all these places, which sadly, because of the speed of light, you, know, you, you can't do. We're, we're separated by millions, if not billions of years. And you know, by the time you get there, what you would have seen would have gone a long time ago. So it would have to be you know, something a bit more instantaneous than that. But yeah, that's what I would like to be able to do. And who would you like to hear interviewed in the innovation stories in the future? Oh, Andrew. <laughs> no, that's a very, another very interesting question. Actually, one I hadn't really quite been prepared for. Um, one of the issues I have in, in respect to how the world is going, it would be good to try and get more younger people on. But of course, you don't know it, who is actually going to succeed and who not. This is one of the problems we're going to have in the UK with, with Brexit, I think. We're going to make it supposedly easier for leading scientists to come in and work. But it's not the leading scientists you want, it's the upcoming people. Mm. So how you spot those, I, I really don't know. So mm. that, that's a toughie. I'm not sure I've answered that one properly. And the last one. What is the most important message that you would like to give to young entrepreneurs, science entrepreneurs? Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I would say what has distinguished me in terms of getting where I am compared with uh, anything else, I'll consider a, a, you know, a lot of people are a lot brighter than me. But yeah, I'm the guy who has got all this because I dared to have a go. And I think that's that's very important. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't worry about whether the glass is half full or half empty, because for me, it, the, the glass was getting uh, pretty empty when I was at Shell. But I thought, oh, time for a refill, time to uh, you know, take advantage of the fact that I'm not necessarily the most wanted person in the world and just quietly get on and uh, use that as an opportunity to do the things you really want. So yeah, yeah, be positive, be positive. The world's not for you, it's not against you, but on the other hand, yeah, if you uh, if you don't try, you won't get won't get anywhere, unless you have a rich daddy or something like that, which is, would be absolutely horrible. 